I'm a UK business owner and I don't have a pension. And quite frankly, I don't think you should have a pension. You might be thinking, whoa, what is this bloke talking about? Well, in this video, I'm gonna clear things up for you because I really think you shouldn't have a pension. Before we get into this video, if you'd like to find the secrets of creating millions of pounds of wealth and building super successful businesses, there's two things that I've found is the easiest ways to do it. Number one, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that like button just underneath me so that I can get the YouTube algorithm to show you more of my videos to help grow your business. Let's get into it. Let's understand actually what happens with your pension money. Most people in the UK and around the world, they get millions and millions of employees, all pay a little percentage of their salary into a pension pot that pays them out for when they retire and leave work. The idea sounds fantastic, but let's actually understand what happens with that money. So you put your percentage in and then the pension company either invest it into government bonds, into property and real estate, and then they take other money and put it into some company bonds, Disney bonds, Facebook bonds, Google bonds, all these top safe companies, or they could put it straight into pension, other pension funds, bigger pension funds that are investing in stuff and indeed in stocks and shares. So that's sort of the big hitters of where your pension money goes. And the idea is they're putting some money into some government bonds and in 30, 40, 50 years time, it's going to be worth a lot more money and that's how they pay you out on your pension or loads of commercial real estate, industrial estates are owned by big pension funds. They invest, they collect the rents and then the property goes up in value and then that's how they're all going to pay out these pensions in the future. So that's what happens with your money. Now, I want to take you back to an 18-year-old me. Now, you might think that um, I don't like the idea of a pension, but actually, I'm obsessed with the idea of a pension because I looked at this when I was 18 thinking, how am I going to plan for my future life? Because I was a business owner from being at the age of school, so I had no one to support me other than me. So I was looking at this. I had my wages coming in or my cash flow coming in from my sauteed job, and I was thinking about what happens when I'm older. I need to put a percentage that goes into a pension. I researched about it, and then I realized I would receive some capital or some pension income at retirement. So behind this yellow sheet is the 18 year old me. And here's what I thought about that setup. I was sad about that setup. Oh, hang on a sec. I'm going to put some of my cash flow, a percentage goes into a pension, and I'm not going to start seeing it until I'm 60, 65, 70 years old. Mm, I'm not keen on that. I want to put my cash, my extra pension money into something and start receiving money, dividends from it now. How do I do that? I wanted to think differently about it. Let me absolutely be clear to you. I love the idea of pension planning. I've been doing this for years. That's why I invested into property at 19 years old and bought more and more invested into businesses because, you know, I had some family bereavements at a really young age and I saw those people didn't have any money and I just didn't want that to happen to me. I wanted to pension plan. But basically, I wanted to be the pension. And if you're a business owner, I think you're going to love this video. Now, if you're working for someone and you don't want to take the risks that entrepreneurs take and business owners take, then I absolutely do think you should invest into some form of pension. But you could be your own pension. Now, some of you have been watching this thinking, yeah, but there's some super tax efficiencies when you invest into a pension and set up a government pension or an employee pension. And you'd be absolutely right. But I think the yields and the returns that entrepreneurs can make by being their own pension far outweighs that. And I'm going to give you some stories on how I've done it in my career to help your career. So let's quickly get into this idea of you being your own pension. And when you invest the money and you start seeing returns much quicker than waiting until you're 65, 70, 75 or 60 years old. What about investing now and start seeing returns in 10 years or even in the same month? Just quickly take your mind back to what most happens to most pension money. It gets invested into government bonds, property, stocks and shares and bigger funds, for example. Let's have a look if you actually invested into stocks and shares right now, what you could turn your money into in just 10 short years. So rather than waiting until you're 60, 65, say you're 20 years old right now and you invested in $1,000 or $5, I'm going to give you some live examples what that would have looked like in 10 years time. So let's look at these four big hitters. You'll know these companies and we're going to play a little game now. What happens if I invest? a thousand dollars 10 years ago into these four big mammoth companies, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla. I've chose these because they're household names that I think you're going to know. So I've taken all of these details um, from an article on eToro and I'm going to put a link in the video description so you see where I'm getting the evidence from and I think it's worth you going to check that out. Now let me also give you some clarity here. I've never invested in stocks and shares and if I look back I think I've made a big mistake there. I think I should have invested in some stocks and shares. I've been much more of a property guy and in a second I'm going to tell you about my live property examples, but I think this is important because everyone thinks, oh my God, I'll buy a property when I've got the deposit for a property. Well, actually, for most people have got a thousand dollars that they can save and invest every single year. And so I think this is a much easier thing to do. And actually, you can invest in stocks and shares with 50 or 100 quid or 100 dollars. So you can start small with this before we go into real estate. Now, let's go into it. So Microsoft, 10 years
years ago. If you'd invested $1,000, the shares would now be worth $11,122 pounds, uh, dollars and 21 cents. I'm doing this in dollars. But I think you'd also have got dividends on top of that, so really good. Apples also pay out dividends as well. But if you invested $1,000 10 years ago into Apple, that now be worth nearly $13,000. This is really interesting stuff. I think you can see how much you could get much faster than waiting until you're nearly about to pop your clogs and invest in and having your pension that the last 10, 15 years of your life when you don't want to do anything other than go on a bloody cruise around the world. Let's have a look around at Facebook shares now. If you'd invested $1,000 in Facebook, you'd now have just over $14,000. But here's one that I really want to talk to you about. If you'd invested just $5 in Tesla, the company run by Elon Musk, $5, not 1000 So cross that out. This is just $5. 10 years ago, you would have $85,000 thousand dollars and you would have done that in 10 years now here's the thing you know this is around about in english money about 60 quid a month have you got 60 pound a month that you can regularly invest into stocks and shares in safe companies i'm not telling you to be super sexy here but i think we know that facebook google amazon tesla these companies are going to be around in 10 15 20 years and they're just going to keep on growing look at the history of disney just keeps on growing you know they're sort of i mean i'm not guaranteeing this but they're like too big to foul. They'll even get bowed out by government. So choose really safe companies, um, in my opinion. And I think these four will be around in 10 years time. That's stocks and shares. Now let's have a look at property. Now I want to give you two examples. That's got nothing up there just to intrigue you. <laughs> Investing in property. I want to give you two live examples of two properties I bought. One's Wing Way, a residential property. One's called Heron House, a commercial property that I bought. The purchase price of this one that I bought was around about 19 years old. I purchased it for 207 thousand English pounds. Its current value is around 440,000 pounds. What's really interesting about that is I've had around just under a quarter of a million pounds worth of rent since I've owned that property. So the rent has covered the interest payments and paid me an income every single month since I've owned that property. And I've done that in my teen years. That alone gives a great example of property. Now I did remember I had to put in around 20k of deposit and stamp duty and all that stuff to acquire that property. And I I think a lot of people are thinking, this is all right for you, James, but where do I get my initial 20K? Don't worry, I'm coming on to that in just a moment. Heron House, this is a commercial property I bought. I bought it for around 150,000 pounds in 2012 when commercial property prices were low. Its current value is around 380,000 pounds. So just under 10 years, doubled in value and a little bit more. And the rent that we've received from that property in 10 years is around 300,000 pounds. So good investments here. This is me pension planning. Yes, I've had to pay tax on this income. And yes, I think that tax far outweighs the tax benefits of investing into a pension and the tax-free savings you can get if you do it through your company or through a government pension scheme. There we go. That's that's just quick examples of me investing in property and building. And I keep all these, by the way. I've never sold a property. I love keeping them. And I've done loads more than this. Check out the YouTube channel for more property stuff. How do you get your investing capital? That's probably what you're thinking. Bloody hell, you've put your deposits down on here. And there are ways of doing this. Once you bought one property and the value of the property grows, you can re-leverage and use the equity to buy other properties. And yes, I've done all those games to reduce the amount of cash I'm putting in to grow my income that allows me to grow my James Sinclair personally built pension fund, for example. But I want you to know how you can do this when you're starting. So you've got a couple of mindsets. These are the two big mindsets that I find most people have. Mindset number one is spend what you earn and invest the rest. That's how most people live their lives. They earn £20,000 a year. And if they've got anything left over, they'll go and save it or invest it. That's one mindset. This though is my mindset. It's been my mindset from a very young age. I invest what I earn and spend the rest. There's two very different mindsets. And I think if you've got those mindsets correct, you'll find the capital to start investing. Let's go over it just one more time. Mindset one is spend what you earn, invest the rest. Mindset two is invest what you earn and spend the rest. And I literally have been doing that since I was a teenager. Now, just a little caveat here. I probably overworked when I was younger. I worked seven days a week. I was gigging. I was to kids' parties. I had big businesses and I was working really, really hard, but I was petrified that because I had my own business, if I got ill, there would be no income. So that's why I was investing into property and investing into businesses to make sure that I was super safe. Now I've taken my foot off the brakes a little bit now, but I think there could have been a, a sort of halfway house. I could have gone on holidays with friends and stuff and done all the stuff that youthful people do rather than just investing my youth into growing businesses. But that is the way I am. That is my DNA. But if you can find a happy medium, I think you'd be on to winning when you can invest in property. So let me just
just quickly talk about this in pension planning. This is how you should think. Your investments fund the fund, not your income. And this is what most people do. And if you really want to build your own pension, you've got to start thinking like this, especially in the early years when you're young. Invest into stuff that will eventually pay dividends, whether that be through rent or dividends from stocks and shares or increased increased equity or definitely business. That would be my number one piece of advice. That then funds the fund, not the income. Because if you use your income to fund the fund, you'll find that you'll never have much left to invest. And that's really, really important. So that's what most people do. And this is what the smart people do. Now, there's a couple of things that I just want to recap with you on the pension planning video. Number one, you must make sure you subscribe to the James Sinclair YouTube channel. That's obviously a smart thing to do. Make sure you hit the like button underneath. There's some things that you're not sure about. Don't worry, hit them in the comments below. I'll do my very best to answer them as the video goes on. Now, if you want to invest in something that I think is really smart, it's my Entrepreneurs University. Yes, I've developed this online training platform to help you on all of this stuff and a whole lot more, including building and scaling and growing your own business. You can try it for free at my website, jamesinclair.net. I'll just tell you that again for free at my website, jamesinclair.net. 14 day free trial on the Entrepreneurs University with me. Go and do it now. Let's get back to the video. Here's my basic rules for living. I live this 50 50 one, and that's what I've always done. Whatever I've earned, 50% I can live on, 50% I invest. So, literally, when I was younger, like 16, 17, rather than spending any money, I saved up that £20,000 to buy my first property when I was a teenager. I then saved more and then bought another property and saved more and lived so frugally. That's the way I chose to live back then. But I think everyone could do the 70 10 10. Rule. Now, this is coming from a bloke called Jim Rohn, and you can listen to his audio book. And I listened to it over the weekend. I thought, this is the happy medium. This is the extreme medium, the one that I wanted to live, but this is the one that everyone could do. And I'm going to go through that in just a tick, but I wanted to go over this and explain this just one more time. This is what James Sinclair did. Everything that I earned, 50% I lived on, 50% I invested. And I literally done that on a continuous basis. And if you want to grow that income to be able to do that with ease, then you need a biz to do that because a business has cash flow and you can grow a business much more than you can grow a salary. The problem is um, being a business owner can be stressful. You're going to take more risks. That's not for everyone to do. This is what everyone could do. 70% of your income, you can keep. You can spend that, do what you like. Holidays, have a great time. 10%, you invest into the market, stocks and shares and doing stuff like that. 10%, you use for your own investments. So this could be into real estate, buying a second property, a second house, investing into a small business that you've got some shares in, and then 10% you give to charity, or to your church, or whatever it is, one of those things. That's what he said. I'm not religious, but uh, uh, but charity, yes, I'm, I'm into that. So that's what Jim Rohn does. I'd really go and urge you to watch some of his stuff on YouTube, or definitely listen to his book on Audible. He's dead now, but super smart. I think everyone can do this. And what Jim Rohn said was really, really interesting. He said if you just invest 10% of your salary, your income, when you're really long at 19 years old, 10% going into super safe stocks and shares, by the time you get to 40, you'll be more wealthy than you can ever, ever believe. Just because the compounding effect of that growing, as long as it's good, super safe companies, and the same if you just invest, say, say you earn. £40,000 a year, 4000 goes into investing into stocks and shares every single year, 4000 you compound into your own investments, whether that's small businesses or buying second properties to rent out, you have a great, great life. The reality is most people don't do that. But some people do invest some of this 70% into pensions that other people manage. But all they're doing is and go and putting it into stocks and shares. They're going to put it into properties or funds. But you could do the same, couldn't you? Maybe you could do both. I don't know. These are just my opinions. So to wrap it all up, I agree with pension planning. I absolutely think it definitely works. Um, but you need to be your own pension. But if you don't feel the riskiness of doing that, then make sure you're investing into a pension. And what's this video here? Because you YouTube's telling me that it's going to tell you all the right stuff to follow on from this. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment below if you don't know. See ya.